Live from Fox 56 Sports, this is Home Team Friday Nights. Sponsored by The Window Source. It's a little cozy here in the studio, but it was not too cozy out here oh in God. Central Kentucky. <laughs> it was a beautiful night for football. A little chilly, though. Michael Epps, Jordan Adams here on Home Team Friday Nights. Playoffs round two. This is where we start to see the teams dwindle a little bit. We saw a few. Obviously, first round, you get those blowouts. You mm -hmm. get some teams just get the ax. But this is where we really see some good ball teams face off. And uh, we start to see the number of our local teams dwindle a little bit. Yeah. Week two, we've already seen, as you mentioned, some, some teams fall off. But one team that I think might have a chance of going pretty far again this year is Frederick Douglass. Obviously, it's exciting. Any team that's trying to defend a state title, Douglass doing it a little different. They had the Class 5A title last year up to 6A. On our show tonight, we're going to start with 6A, work our way down. So let's head to 6A. Douglass and Madison Central in town. And a fast start for the Broncos. That's how it normally goes with Coach McPeak's ball club. Tay Tay Allen takes it to the house. Then we fast forward a little bit later in the first. Indians inside the five. Good bounce back from Coach Blair's squad to get here to the second round. Elijah Steele, he's going to go and would end up losing the football here. Not what you like to see there in the red zone, but it's recovered by Cody Morrison in the end zone to put Central on the board. Fans loving it, but just so they drew it up. Right, <laughs> silent again shortly after. Jackson Strautman finds Darian Talbert, explosive playmaker for this team. 50 plus yards for the score. Douglas rolls and advances with the 50 to 7 win over Madison Central. Still here in town over at Lafayette was the site for this matchup between Bryan Station and Cates Creek. First quarter action, it's going to be quarterback Trenton Cutright, and he connects with freshman Damon Green to give the defenders a 21-0 lead in just the first quarter. So, Cates Creek got some work to do, but it's going to be Cutright again. This time he's going to find fellow senior star JT Haskins Jr. with the TD after making a few guys miss. Brian Station with a huge lead, and after it's all said and done, Station gets the win. They take down Tate's Creek by a score of 43 to 10, Mike. Man, Coach Hawks, a great season for Tate's Creek. That's for sure. Building a program there, but uh, roll in there uh, for Coach Philip Hawkins and the defenders. So, pretty standard what we expected here in 6A. Ryle is going to come here in town to play Brian Station. So, Station gets the host. Douglas, because of that RPI, they got to hit the road and go to Mail. Mail is a really good team. Their only loss is to St. X earlier this season. So, Jordan, that's kind of how it goes here in Class 6A, right? The, uh, the, it runs through Louisville. I don't yeah. think, I think uh, our guy Connor gave me a stat a while ago. I think there have only been two or three state champs ever not in Louisville mm. for 6A. So that's kind of how it goes. Pretty standard. We had a pretty interesting shocker here tonight mm -hmm. in 5A. Let's go to it. Scott County, they've been rolling. They dominated Woodford County there at the end of the regular season. Wish the energy was a little bit better at the Bird's Nest, but it wasn't. Cardinals down 21-7 at halftime. Cooper created some turnovers, then extended the lead right out of the break. A deep bomb to Austin Alexander. Beats the Cards DB and it's 28 to 7. Like, wow. And one of the top teams in the state down at big at home. They had a good drive in response. Jacob Fryman punches it in. Bell count for that team. But that was it for the Cards. The Cooper Jaguars. They beat Great Crossing 40 to nothing on that field in September. They come back into Georgetown and stun Scott County 49 to 21. All right, Mike. Down to Madison County where Madison Southern hosted North Laurel. Jaguars driving and already up 7-6 when Jude McWhorton finds Cole Messer for the uh, score midway through the second quarter. So now up 14-6. It was a defensive battle really for the rest of the half. And we're going to see the, uh, the Jaguars defense halt the Eagles ground attack right here. Just gobbling up the running back. Ooh. Nowhere really to go. Uh, before halftime. North Laurel, though, driving. They're going to get a big gain from quarterback Hunter Morgan, who finds Jack Chapel. Nice throw. An issue, though, with the clock. He goes out of bounds, but an issue with the clock would force them to kick a field goal, at least try to, but they oh. whiff and fumble it. So, not too good right there. Um, North Laurel, though, wins 42-6. to six. Tough one. Uh, the kids in Berea, good season for them, but the Jags move on. They're going to have to go to Southwestern, and then Scott County, tough loss for them. Highlands is 
one of the top teams in 5A, so they will host that one there when they redistrict the bracket here based on RPI here in the third round. So interesting, man. I thought Scott County, I mm -hmm. thought they had a good shot. I thought I thought Woodford had a good shot. They get stunned yep. in round one, so our 5A teams go down. All right, coming up, let's go to 4A. One team that is not going down probably anytime soon is Boyle County at home and comfy. You're going to see these highlights up next on Home Team Friday Nights. Fox 56 Sports, you're watching Home Team Friday Nights. We're the Sam Student Section, and you're watching Home Team Friday Night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great energy. Yeah, get me ready to go. I like the little construction <laughs> gig they got going. We're going to see Sarah in a little bit. That was a great game with mm -hmm. Paris. Uh, interesting, highly anticipated game. But let's go over to 4A, Boyle County. Obviously, the three-time defending champs in that class trying to get a fourth straight, take another step towards that as they face Perry County Central. Long hike for them, too. Didn't take long for the Rebels to get on the board. Montaven, Quistenberry. Showing the wheels, outrunning everybody for the TD, as he normally does on home team Friday nights. Getting rowdy as Boyle starting to run away with it. That's exactly what Quistenberry did as he takes the screen pass. Couple ankles, a hey, good downfield blocks too. You got to give them credit. Ooh. Avery Boner, good block right there. And then he just does the rest. Holy. Just making guys look silly. Big time score. Rebels win big, 49 to nothing. They cruise to the quarterfinals. Hey, we got another big win coming up. It's Franklin County hosting oh, yeah. North Oldham. Uh, already up a few scores here as the Flyers hand it off to Jaquan Crawford. Just runs a man over. Man, that guy needs to get in the weight room in the offseason. Crawford <laughs> flexing on him. 27 nothing after that PAT was blocked. Next possession, it's Christian Moore busting out an ankle tackle Big as foul. he jogs his way into the end zone. Nice and easy for Franklin County. Um, the defense forces a punt, and uh, yeah, that special teams unit is pretty nice, folks. Gavin Hirsch, check this out. He's going to field it, follow a few of his blocks before tiptoeing down the sideline right into your living room and into the end zone. It was all Franklin County in this one, Mike. 50 to nothing. That's kind of a cheat code when you got two backs like that to hand it off to. Chris Moore, former student athlete of the week. So let's take a look at the scoreboard. Franklin County, they got the second highest RPI in the state. They are going to host the next two rounds if they can get there. We're still waiting on that to sail in Spencer County final, but the expected look is that uh, Bargetown is going to come in here to Franklin County. Assuming the sales get the win, they'll go to Paducah. Then to the bottom half, it's the game that we have all been waiting for. Corbin and Boyle County. This game's going to be in Danville. They played in the uh, state championship game at Kroger Field last year and then coming to Catholic. They have the top RPI, so if Bull County gets that win or Corbin, they will go to coming to Catholic up there outside. Elite Cincinnati. players on both sides of the ball for both teams, so that should be fun. Yeah, and they're going to have something to say about it, but it feels like Boyle, Corbin, that's that's the state title in 4A, but we will see. I mean, Franklin County, they got a good squad. You saw them, mm -hmm. but uh, let's go check uh, Class 3A, what you got here for Lex County. Yeah, and an electric crowd at Lexington Catholic as they host Russell for a chance at the regionals next week. Um, first drive is going to be Sam Clements, and he's going to walk this one in for an early set nothing lead and it was all about time of possession and spreading the field for the Knights. Later in the first it's going to be Jackson Weiss who finds Caleb Nelson. Look at that deep 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 ball and he comes up with the catch. Not too bad there uh, for Lex Cat as they continue to pour it on against Russell. Here's the one last play for you. Hey, a little handoff for you. See Red Seas Park. Touchdown. Lex Cat 48. Russell, nothing. Man, Coach Bosch, he's got it going out there. All right, Harrodsburg, where the Mercer County Titans are taking on the Central Yellow Jackets. Titans defense making a statement. Cameron Bottoms gets the INT at the goal line. Big return out of it. He's fired up. Good return, man. He's still going. Almost takes it. I mean, it'd be nice if he took it to the house because they needed some points tonight. Coach yeah. Yeast loving the passion. Thaddeus Mays doing his thing as he backpedals. Somehow stays on his feet for the big run. Lowers his shoulder at the end, too. This team has talent. Yeast, obviously, it's a special thought for him. He's uh, a UK legend trying to make a statement here trying to make a postseason run, but that run would come to an end here in the second round. They lose 37 to nothing. So taking a look here, it's tough for our local teams. Not much going here after Mercer gets that loss. 
So Lexington Catholic, we go down to the bottom half of the graphic. Um, Lexington Catholic and Belfry, that could be a fantastic game if we see that. No, but Bell County gets the win. Wow, 24-22, that's a big time upset <laughs> over Belfry. Wow, see, we're learning this just as you are at home. All right, let's see, let's keep going. Coming up, Class 2A and Class 1A, some good games as well. That is right after the break. From Fox 56 Sports, you're watching Home Team Friday Nights. This is Boyle County Student Section. You're watching Home Team Friday Nights. We're going to steal the moon. Oh, yeah! I guess it was Pinocchio. That was interesting. I love it. That's great energy. I love the costumes. You love to see it. A lot of fun out there. They always have a lot of fun in that student section. All right, Class 2A, LCA, the Kings in this one. What you got? For real. Uh, yeah, 2A Lexington Christian looking for a fourth straight state quarterfinal berth hosting Monroe County. Second offensive plate of the game, folks. And it's going to be Brady Hensley. We've been talking about him all season. He takes his hand off 20 yards for this opening score. Oh, we. Next series is going to be Eagles' number one player, best player in the state, Cutter Bowley. Finding receiver Saxton Howard from 20 yards out. That's a pretty nice ball. Eagles up 14 0 early in this one. Still in the first. It's that man again, number seven. It's going to be a pretty good play action from him here. Got even the cameraman before he finds his man, Will Rich. 15 yards out for 15. Whew, Eagles just went win, or just one win away, I should say, from playing in Kroger after winning tonight 57 to 14. Hey, big time. Big time win for Coach Charles. They had a good morning, too, on home team kickoff. So LCA advances, and they're going to have to go to Mayfield. That is an extremely difficult game and a far trip. Then Green County at Owensboro Catholic. Also, shout out to Somerset. Big win over Leslie County, 57 to nothing. And Breathitt falls to Beachwood. We saw LCA go over to the west side of the state already this year, and they were at Bowling Green and won that 5A game. So that was a lot of fun. All right, we got the best for last. Man, I love 1A football. Inside access with Chad Pennington and the Sarah Spartans. Check it out. Okay, know your checks, understand the situations, understand the situations we talked about, and your competitive will. That's what it's about. Your competitive will, your core values. Are you going to outwork them? Are we going to make better decisions and have greater character than they do? Are we going to be more accountable than them? Are we going to be more resilient? I say yes. yes sir. I say yes. yes sir. Our competitive will, our brotherhood, our core values versus theirs. Let's go get it. Come on. Let's go, 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 go. Sarah undefeated this season. Average margin of victory, 31 points. Just dominating teams. They were having fun with the fireworks, but Paris has opened eyes in the state. 10 and 1, the only loss to Raceland. Let's check it out. Sarah striking first. Luke Pennington, the Brock Kaufman. That combination has produced more touchdowns, Jordan, than any combo in the state. Wow. And they're both juniors. <laughs> Impressive stuff in a 7-0 Spartans lead. Greyhounds get their shot, try to run the football. But, oh, a little numb fingers tonight. Fumble. Not good. Kaufman recovers. His, his defense is impressive. He caught an interception tonight, too. Ensuing drive, Pennington hits Charlie. Slaybaugh on the flat. Another junior gets some good blocks from the wideouts mm -hmm. and finds the end zone. Sayre punches Paris early. It was over early, 38-12. to 12. The final, Sayre's moving on. That's the game I was looking at. But, man, the Greyhounds just didn't have enough in that one. So, Raceland is next for them. All right, coming up, we got our plays of the week to show you, and they are some good ones. Stay tuned right after the break. From Fox 56 Sports, you're watching Home Team Friday Nights. All right, welcome back. We got our plays of the week, three good ones. Let's check them out. You're going to vote on them. Play number one, who else then? Montavian Quisenberry. We showed it earlier. Breaking ankles. I mean, this guy's impossible to tackle. Literally. Talented guy here in the state, playmaker. And the Rebels go on the beat, Perry County Central. All right, play number two. Lexington Catholic's Jackson Wasick. Wasick. Wasick, yeah. thank you. Throws it deep. Uh, a great pass, great catch, too. So not too bad there. And then our last one game I was at, Franklin County's Gavin Hurst. Punt return all the way. Barely got touched. Would have scored in flag football. So three very good plays this week once again, Mike. Dude's talented. Pretty impressive stuff. We've seen him. You also saw the UK game. Mm -hmm. That was a good one tonight. We're going to give you all that coverage this weekend. But for now, he's Jordan. I'm Michael. Thanks for watching Home Team Friday Nights, everybody. Have a good one.